Street Greg Duke here with you again for another Sonic Story Time. And this time we have a guest, Tom Jennings, musician, music journalist, educator, and as you will see and hear, raconteur. So here's a quick story, I guess we'll call this along the lines of a brush with greatness. And over the years I've done a lot of interviews. Most of my interviews are done by phone. And about 2011, I think it was, Johnny Winter was gonna be performing at the Bear's Den in Niagara Falls, New York. And my friend Gus, who runs a website called backstageaccess.com, with two X's if you ever look it up, asked me if I wanted to do an interview with Johnny Winter. Now, typically if Gus asked me to do an interview, I'd like to interview, I'd like to interview guys that, you know, I'd either collected their records or had a little bit of background knowledge on, because, you know, you, you can sort of sense from the interviewer if they A, know the artist or, you know, are enthusiastic about their work. I didn't know a whole heck of a lot about Johnny Winter. In fact, if anything, I knew more about Edgar Winter because he had that one song, Frankenstein, which is a pretty cool song. And uh, you're gonna go listen to that now, trust me, it's a great song. Anyhow, so uh, I'm doing my research and I find some interesting tidbits about Johnny. Um, one of the things was he had signed one of the largest record deals ever at the time with CBS Records. It was the largest advance, I think, in the early 70s. So, I mean, he must have been a pretty big deal back then. Uh, he had performed at Woodstock. He was a big fan of Muddy Waters. And so I figured, uh, you know, we've, we've got some topics. Plus, he had a new album coming out and everything. I also read, though, so I was kind of mentally prepared for the fact that he was not someone who liked to do interviews. So he gets on the phone and, you know, just we do our pleasantries. Hey, you know, really nice to, glad you're taking the time to do this interview, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, first question is like, oh, you know, here you got a new album coming out. Uh, can you tell me about it? It's done. Okay. Um, well, you're going to be performing some of the songs on the new album at, at the show coming in Niagara Falls, right? Yep. Three. I go, okay. So we're kind of going back and forth. I'm just giving him, and I think the problem is I'm asking him some close ended questions. So. I'm thinking, well, maybe I can open him up with my favorite topic. That's Woodstock, you know, because he played at Woodstock. I go, well, well, listen, I said, you know, you were one of the performers at Woodstock, and not a lot of people know that. Do you have any share, or any, any stories that you want to share about Woodstock? Mud. I'm like, mud? Okay. Um, well, by any chance, did you have an opportunity to maybe meet any of the other performers backstage, hang out? You got any stories about that? Nope. Flew in, flew out. And I mean, even when I got to the point of we're talking about his favorite musician, Muddy Waters, who he worked with, you know, it comes along with, he's a great guy. So I, I'm just realizing that I'm not getting anywhere, so I figured I might as well wrap it up, which I did. And I think the last thing I said to him was, uh, you know, you don't like to talk much, do you? He's like, nope. And I mean, when I edited this interview, which is still online, I actually had to add words to it. You know, something, instead of just mud, I'd have to say it was muddy. But... The biggest takeaway I had from that was, is if you think about it, this is a guy that, that had this huge recording contract. He was a big deal. He's playing stadiums. They're giving him hundreds of thousands of dollars in the 70s. It's bigger than big. He's performing at Woodstock. And you know what? Anytime you ask an artist about playing at Woodstock, they got huge stories and all these things that they got to say about it. But there's one word that they forget to say. And that word is mud.